Hello, and welcome back to an introduction to agent-based modeling. In this unit, we're going to be discussing how to build your very first simple models, how to use them, how to manipulate them, and how to kind of start to understand the NetLogo programming environment, which is the environment that we're going to be using throughout this class. So I've got NetLogo open here already, and I went ahead and I opened up the models library, which you can find under file models library, right? And I'm going to bring up the flocking model just to talk to you a little bit about what the NetLogo looks like and what it does. Now I have it zoomed out quite a bit so it's easy for you to see, uh, but you can control that uh, at any time by just going up to zoom, larger, smaller, normal size, right? Um, and, uh, and basically here you see like a standard NetLogo window. And by now, from after working through unit one, you've seen me kind of manipulate the NetLogo world and environment a little bit. Uh, but I wanna to talk to you a little bit more about what all the components are here. Um, but before I do that in too much detail, I do highly want to recommend uh, that if you have some time, and especially if you haven't really ever done any programming before, uh, that you take some time and maybe work through some of the tutorials uh, that are available on the NetLogo website. Now, you can also just follow along here, but if you ever need additional exercises, additional work to do, I highly recommend you spend some time there. And those can be found by going up to Help and then going up to uh, NetLogo uh, User Manual. Uh, clicking on that, which will bring up your browser window with the NetLogo user manual in it. And then if you scroll down, you'll see tutorial number one, tutorial number two, and tutorial number three. Right, so the, 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 the course itself that I'm teaching you is completely self-contained, but if you just need some additional time and some additional effort learning some of the basic net logo commands and procedures and, and how to develop models, this is a great way to get some additional resources. Of course, the textbook that accompanies the course, An Introduction to Age-Based Modeling with Uri Walensky and myself, is also a great way to get some additional content that you might use as a supplement to the course. That being said, let's start talking about NetLogo itself. So here you have the NetLogo programming environment uh, opened up uh, and you can see the, the NetLogo flocking model that's there. And what I first want to talk about is the fact that you know we've seen mainly the interface tab so far, but there are actually two other tabs in NetLogo. So the interface tab, the info tab, and the code tab, right? And, the, um, and we're going to talk about each of these in turn. Uh, we're going to talk primarily in this first subunit on the interface and the info tab. The code tab is really how we actually capture the code and get it working. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that in later units. Uh, but right now, let's turn our attention to the info tab. So in the info tab, we have the documentation for the model. And this is a very unusual um, experience in some respects. Um, the vast majority of programming environments don't have the documentation attached as part of the model, but in NetLogo it is, right? So you can immediately click over and find out what the model is about. And there's a section called what is it that describes what the model is doing, right? There's a section called how it works that describes kind of what the birds are doing in the flocking model. There's a section called how to use it, which describes how you actually, what buttons you should push and what they happen and what effects and what the various other parameters are. There's a section called things to notice that allows you to kind of have some explorations about what's going on with the model and things to try, things that you can manipulate in the model. And there's also an extending the model, which allows you to add, suggest things that you might not want to add to the model to change the model up a little bit, right? If you're looking for a good first place to kind of start with some model development ideas, extending the model is a really good way to go. And we're going to talk in a couple more units coming up about how uh, to actually extend models that are out there. Then the next one is the NetLogo features, which discusses um, some of the really interesting features that are used in this case, right? Um, and so there's a subtract headings primitive in this particular uh, model, uh, and that actually does things by adding and subtracting angles, which is a little more difficult. So it's something to kind of take an eye on. Then there's a section on related models. Uh, and those are um, models that are related to this model in some way. A credits and references section, how to cite, telling you how to cite, and of course the copyright and license. Now, all of these sections are pretty much standard in all of the NetLogo models library models, right? Uh, but they, um, there's no requirement that they be there. Um, so, you know, I highly encourage you to kind of use them to the, to the extent that they're useful. It's a nice framework, right? And I usually use them in my own writing and development, but you're not required to use them. Um, another comment I would make is that as you're developing your model, you should be writing the information tab at the same time, right? You should be documenting the model and creating the model simultaneously. 
Okay, so let's switch over to a brand new model. And in this model, uh, I wanted to show you how you might start creating the information tab, right? So here you can see you could you could write your commands, do your interface, all that, and then put a put your sorry put your commands over in the code. And then if you'll notice when you click over the info tab on a blank model, it has all those sections that we talked about. Now essentially the info tab uses a very very primitive uh, markup language that understands a file a few commands. So if you hit the edit button, you'll see it, right? And so you'll see that. The way it gets that blue heading level is it just has two hashtags before uh, the the uh, what is it statement, right? Um, and so you can do different things in in the code to actually give you some additional um, features, additional look in the info tab, right? So if I click the edit tab off, you see it renders that as that blue, right? But I highly recommend, as I mentioned, writing this info tab as you are developing your model, making sure that the model and the info tab are in sync as much as possible. It just makes the model easier to read and easier to understand. So um, that's the basic info tab discussion. And uh, in the next uh, subunit, we're going to be talking about the interface tab.